Hey, Jay Walkers. Happy Sunday. Here we go. We're in Mark chapter 12, moving right along. I'm calling this message apartment living. I don't know if you've ever stayed in an apartment or lived there or if you quote unquote own your house or if you're still living with somebody else, but God has something to say to us about that and about other things. This story is a story that's found at the beginning of Mark chapter 12. It's called the parable of the tenants. And here we go. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. So this is where we're starting. We're starting uh, with a story of a person who has prepared and planted a vineyard and then went to a different country. So this person who prepared the vineyard is God, God the Father, and he has given us everything that we own. Uh, the saying is, everything that you own is on loan. And it's a good place. It's a, it's a happy place. It's a place that's been well prepared and well designed. It said he planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit. So it's a protecting place. It's got a, a place for the wine press and a, a tower to, to look out over the land. It's, it's a good land. And it says, and he leased it to tenants and went into another country. So tenants, that's going to be the people of God, or in this case, the people of Israel. And uh, the land itself represents something too. So let's keep going. It says, when the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. So... Let's, let's look at what's going on. We've got the vineyard owner, which is God. We've got the tenants, who are the Israelites. And then we've got the vineyard itself. And the vineyard itself is given to the people of God. It's a, it's a good land that has everything that it needs to produce fruit. I don't know if you recognize this or not, but you have everything that you need to produce fruit in your life. God has set up a place for you. He's given you all of the things. He's told you the way to do it. And you have all that you need. But the question is, are you living like a good renter or a not so good renter? So I don't know if you've ever rented. I've rented a place before. I've also rented a place out before. And I've noticed in both of those that sometimes when it's a place that you rent, you don't really treat it with as much care as a place that you own. In other words, we're not always the best tenants. So what we do is we kind of are a little bit lazy with the cleaning or we think, ah, not my place anyway, not my problem. When you own a house and it's yours, you tend to treat it a little bit differently. You don't want it to get messed up. You don't want it to have problems. If there's something that comes up, you try to fix it quickly. And the truth is that even though it seems like we own certain things, we don't own anything. Everything is God's. Everything is from him. It's all a gift. It's all a blessing. We can think that we've earned it. We can think that we deserve it. And when we start to think those things, we're a little bit off in our understanding of what it means to be a steward of the things that God has given us. So that's two ways we can get it kind of messed up. We can be a bad tenant in that we don't care for the things that we've been given. We don't maybe tend the fruit in our vineyard. We don't really like keep, take care of the plants, water them enough. I don't know if you're good with plants. Uh, I try to be, but I've also definitely had some plants not survive on my watch. And so you have to take care of them. You have to give them sunlight. You have to water them. You have to prepare, give them a good place, plant them the right way, fertilize them. There's a lot of care that goes into taking care of these things. They don't just grow themselves most of the time. Sometimes you're going to have to do work. And we're not always the best tenants. We're not always the best caretakers of the areas that God has given us to look out for in our lives. And the question is, how do we know if we're being a good caretaker or not? Fruits being produced. Plants that aren't healthy, that aren't getting enough water, that aren't getting enough sun, they don't produce fruit. And this story says, when the season came, 
he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. Not all of it, but some of it. And it says, and they took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. So these vine dressers, the people that are there, they're, they're the religious leaders. They are the ones who are leading, supposed to lead God's people. And these servants that are coming back to collect for God or to get some of the fruit for God, those are representing the prophets of the Old Testament that came and spoke on God's behalf. And so in this case, what Jesus is doing is he's reminding these religious leaders of their history. Their history is one where when a prophet of God came to speak, the religious leaders attacked him, often beat him up, in some cases even killed him, sent him away. So Jesus is saying, that's your background, that's your story. This is what you've done to the people that I've sent. Um, you've ignored my messengers. You've ignored the people that I've sent to speak on my behalf. And you're supposed to be people who speak on my behalf is another thing that he's telling them. You're the leaders today. You're supposed to speak on my behalf. Instead, you're not only not listening to me, but when I send someone to you to speak to you, you're trying to shut them up. You're trying to keep them from speaking. And it says, again, he sent to them another servant. So this is God being patient, right? He's, he's like, okay, that didn't go well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this again. We're going to try again. God's so patient. He's so just and fair, more than he has to be. He's already sent them someone. He's sending them someone else. And they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another. And him they killed. So it's not just happening. It's actually getting worse every time. The first time, they just beat him up a little and sent him away. The second time, they struck him, treated him shamefully. Now this time, they're killing him. It's getting worse. And so with many others, some they beat and some they killed, he had still one other, a beloved son. So the son is the son, and it's Jesus. And this is Jesus showing us once again that he knows who he is. He, he knows that he's the son of God. And he's saying, I'm the last messenger. This is your last chance. This is, I'm, I'm the last one who's coming. No prophets, no messengers of this kind after me. And here's what it says. Uh, he had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So this is how they thought that they were going to get the inheritance. They would just kill the son, and then the inheritance would be theirs. What's crazy, we know from later readings in the Old Testament, that God wants them to be heirs, that God wants them to have a share in the inheritance. But the way they get it isn't by killing the son, it's by trusting him. Now, we do know that it had to be done at this point, And that's what Jesus is saying. He knows that this is in his future. He knows it's coming. He's going to be killed. And that's coming. And then it says, And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? So now it's asking, whenever they are killed, or when Jesus is killed, when they kill him and throw him out, What's he going to do? It says he will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying the people of Israel are going to kill the son of man, the son of God. They're going to kill Jesus. They're going to kill him. And they're going to throw him out of the vineyard and say, now we get to take over. It's our inheritance now. And that's basically what the religious leaders, the Jewish people did. They tried to silence Jesus. They beat him. When they couldn't beat him, they killed him. And they threw him out and they said, that was not the son of God. That is not anybody. Ignore that man. 
We're going to continue doing what we were doing with our religious traditions and listen to us. There is no Jesus. He was not the son of God, false prophet. And that's what the religious leaders ended up saying. And then it says, what's God going to do? He's going to destroy the tenants. In other words, if you think of it as a bad apartment person, uh, a bad renter, he's going to evict them. They're going to get evicted. They're going to get sent out of the apartment. They didn't take care of it. They're sent out. And then he's going to let someone else move in. And in this story, it says he will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. So he's going to give the vineyard to others. And who are those others that he's going to give the vineyard to? Well, it's the church. It's the people of God. And now the people of God are going to be his ambassadors, his representatives, just like the Israelites were supposed to be. Now it's their turn. It's your turn. It's my turn. It's our turn. We get to try and be representatives of God. How will we represent him is the question. It says, and they were seeking to arrest him, but feared the people, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. They perceived correctly. So they left him and went away. So Jesus was the last messenger. He was rejected. The question is, what does it look like now that some time has passed and God has taken the vineyard and given it to us, the, the church, the spirit age? God has now given us the temple. Will we be good renters or will we act like we own the vineyard ourselves? It's tough because in our lives, we want to be the owners, but God's the owner. And I think that's my main point today. Everything that you own is on loan from God. You don't have anything that he didn't give you. All of the things that you own or have are because of him. So we should give him credit for that. We should give him glory for that. When we produce, it should be to produce fruit for God. Not fruit for ourselves. Not for our own kingdom. When God sends us a messenger, something that he says that maybe we don't really want to hear, or that's hard to hear, we listen. We don't beat them and throw them out. And we don't kill Jesus. I know that sounds crazy. Like, why would we kill Jesus? We know who he is and what he's done. But I think that the way that we do that practically in our everyday lives is that we don't invite him to go with us. We throw him out of the vineyard. Like, we'll give him a little bit of time in the morning or we'll give him a little bit of time on the side or we'll talk to him in a prayer before we eat a meal or before we go to sleep. But is he really the one who is leading everything like he owns everything which he does and that's the question what kind of a tenant are you being are you being the type of person who acts like you don't have to really keep the place clean because it's not yours or are you being the person who thinks this is mine and i'm gonna treat it like it's mine i'm gonna take care of it but i own it we don't want to be either of those we want to be the type of person who treats it like it's ours, but recognizes that it's not. Because all the things that we have are a gift and a blessing from God. I think that's what this message is talking about today. It's Jesus. And sure, he was talking to the religious leaders and trying to get them to understand that what they were doing was rejecting him. They were rejecting the one that God sent, the, the true owner sent as a representative and that meant that they were going to be replaced and that's the world that we're in now where the church has replaced the jewish people as the representatives for the true god who is father son and spirit and so that's what we get to do 
And when we do that, we better do it in a way that remembers who God is and who we are. We're just living in an apartment, but we want to treat it like a home. God's given us everything that we need to be a blessing to this world. So let's go out and do that. If you never trusted Jesus, uh, that's a big step because this is saying that if you reject him, you're already out of this vineyard, this place that God has prepared. And so we want to start with acknowledging who Jesus is and remind ourselves that he is the one who's the true owner of it all. So let's do that together today. Say, dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for who you are and what you've done for what you've given me. God, I see in this story that you are a good owner, that you're the rightful owner, and that you have prepared a beautiful place for me. You've provided for me. You've taken care of me. You've given me everything that I need to produce fruit in my life for your glory. God, I'm sorry that sometimes I've, I've used the things that you've given me to produce things for my own glory. And I'm sorry that sometimes when you sent messages to me or when you told me what to do, that I ignored those things and I chose my own path. God, I ask that you forgive me for that. Today, I want to turn to you. I don't want to reject Jesus. I want to give him full reign over my life. I believe that he is the one that you sent as the last messenger to, to die on a cross for me. And, and he did that to cover my sins and to make me right with you, God. Thank you for that. I acknowledge what Jesus did and I accept his gift of salvation, which means it's not because of what I've done. This too is a gift. And I accept the gift of life that Christ promises and offers me. Send your spirit, God, to lead me and guide me from this day forward. Help me to be a true representative of you, one that shows other people what it's like to follow you and doesn't just take my own path. God, I pray that I live a life not as a bad tenant or a bad renter who mistreats all the things that I have and not as one who owns it all and is the one who gets to make all the decisions, but as someone who recognizes that you're the owner but, but attempts to live in a way that brings you honor and glory. It takes care of what you've given me. God, I, I give that to you today. Lead me and guide me from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for being with me today, with us today. Uh, we love talking to you guys. And we also, I think this is week 10 coming up of our Jay Walker's Discipleship Nights. That's Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Number 739-6681-5494 on Zoom. Come hang out with us if you'd like to. And if you missed one through nine or some combination of those, we go through them again. We usually take a little break right after we do the 10 weeks and then meet back up uh, after that. So that, that time is here. It's almost December, which is a really cool time of the year. And uh, we just get to celebrate the fact that Jesus left his throne in heaven to come down to earth and live among us and give us the perfect example. So that's what we'll celebrate from now until December 25th and, and beyond because it's something to remind ourselves every day. Uh, we do a message every Sunday, 9 a.m. And we pray for you all throughout the week. Love you, Jaywalkers. Have a great week and we'll see you real soon.